A tribute to John Coles next on Meet the Farmer TV. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food. Here at the Charlottesville City Market for years and years, John Coles has been known as the goat cheese guy. This is a special show coming up, a tribute to John Coles at the City Market. My name's John Coles. Uh, I'm uh, uh, here a uh, vendor at the Charlottesville uh, Farmer's Market. The uh, name of our farm is uh, Satterfield Dairy Goats. And uh, I'm a member of uh, VICFA, which is the Virginia Independent Consumers and Farmers Association. The thing that uh, uh, is important about the, the uh, small farm situation is that uh, we being small farmers aren't part of agribusiness and we would like to have an, a, a venue where we can sell and the farmers market is perfect for that. Now there are certain things that uh, state regulation does not allow us to sell uh, like for instance goat cheese and so uh, I can legally give it away and uh, I do accept donations not for the cheese but the donations are for lobbying and for court costs and believe me over the last 30 years we've had a lot of expenses on both of these. So uh, uh, there's ways of getting around it so that the, the public can get the food that they want. And uh, so a lot of people aren't satisfied with what they get buy at the supermarket, so they'd like to buy from the, from the farmer they trust. And uh, this is something that's kind of hard for the establishment to, to accept. So it's a, it's a good fight and uh, it's, it's going on. I grow what I have here on my stand, and, and I bring it here and I sell it to you, the final consumer. So this is a, what we call relationship marketing. And, and uh, whereas when you go to a supermarket, you don't know where that food came from. It's very important that, that we get the message across that small farmers are not big farmers, uh, they shouldn't be under the same regulatory scheme as the big farmers because we can't survive under those conditions. From arugula to zucchini at the White House. Save the family farm. In the kitchen. In the end, the bill passed. It's about preserving some semblance of the family farm. And for locally grown food. It's about market access. Plants don't have personalities. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the new American agriculture in our whole agriculture education system is going to change. We have a great solution to some of these uh, crises that we're now facing. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. Meet the Farmer TV. Now let's go around and talk to some of the other vendors of their experience, their stories, their history with John Cole. Well, uh, John and Christine and I were original founders of the VICFA formation. Uh, the VICFA organization. We've been working against government rules and regulations that apply to farmers selling directly to consumers. John really was my hero, friend, a great patriot, uh, very close to him, a man that uh, really stood behind whatever he said he was going to do. A great man. They've been fighting the food police for 30 years, you know, and we've been doing it for 10, so there are leaders and uh, it's great to do battle with them. Uh, one of the great things about John when we were fighting the animal identification started in 2004 and he stayed alive long enough to see it collapse. It was a great thing. In the state's infinite wisdom they made selling uh, raw milk goat cheese illegal uh, a few years ago so instead of selling it he just gave it away and people donated it's much or more than the value of the cheese. So, you're just saying uh, how stupid the rules are. People still want the cheese, it's still great cheese, and nobody's ever gotten sick. So, I mean, the rules are just you know, useless. Well, John and Christine both came up with that theory. I mean, we know it. In a few other places, raw milk is being given away, and people charge for the bottle. You know, things like that to get around the rules, but you know, it's such a silly thing when we know naturally that raw milk is one of the best foods there is. You know, when he went into battle, he was always so steady, so, so sure, so, and yet so unpretentious. Un he didn't look sharp or anything, he just was sharp. 
And uh, we actually together, the two of us went to Minneapolis uh, in 2007 representing VICFA to fight the NACE program. And it was just an honor to work with them, informing other people across the nation about the horrors of what this was gonna be. So it was just, uh, it was just terrific. I'm Eileen Stevens. Uh, my company name is Green and Gold, and you're watching Meet the Farmer TV. Thank you. Okay, well, well, um, John, I, I have moved into John's space, and uh, I have been working next to John for, I don't know, 15 years maybe, even when we weren't both in those same spaces. And he's just... Uh, He's just as part of the flavor of the market. John was a very a man who very dedicated to, to uh, his ideas of, of freedom for the farmer and the freedom to sell, uh, to sell your local produce. He, he didn't like a lot of government control and he, he stuck to his guns. Uh, just wanted to stand up for, for the rights of, you know, of the little guy, of the little farmer. I'm sure that Thomas Jefferson would have thought John Coles was terrific. So uh, John, just as a neighbor, a market neighbor for me, we we always had a great relationship. You know, everybody helps everybody out. And um, I, I'd known him for 30 years, actually. I met him when he first came to Charlottesville. He came to to uh, maybe buy a goat from me. He ended up not buying a goat from me, but bought somebody else's goat. So that was, we, we could talk goats together and we could talk plants together. And I remember one time he came and, and he had, in with his lettuce or his spinach or something, he had a frog. So we caught the frog and put it in a bag, sent it home. And then another time he came and he had a praying mantis. And I caught the praying mantis who flew up in my tent you know, so we just had, we just had a great friendship, a great relationship, and I had a lot of respect for, for the way he stuck to his principles. And I'm privileged to be in his spot. I'm, I'm not happy that I have to keep telling everybody the bad news, because many people don't know. So I miss him, and, and I feel like he's a real presence on that corner. John and Christine have put so much work into, um, trying to clarify the issue of the government control over the markets. You know, they have this long-running battle with, with the VDAX over scales. And um, I think he, he, just, he just demonstrated that, demonstrated to all of us that if you, if you risk really stick to, um, really stick to your principles that, that sometimes uh, the little guy can can prevail. It'll be here. Uh, they haven't won on everything, but they they seem to have prevailed in their VDAX argument, and they of course were very instrumental in founding VICFA, which I'm sure you've talked about with other people. So um, they were they were real pathfinders. So a big inspiration to a lot of people. Being next to John all these years, I have listened and listened, I and mean, I've heard so many times how he would state his case to the customers and talk about the free cheese, and um, he was just a great PR man for, for his cause. So uh, everybody who came and saw his signs about the free cheese, he'd go into the whole thing about, you know, the government won't let us sell our cheese, so we're going to give it away. And and he just he just won converts all over town. He's the one that does all the work, huh? That's right. <laughs> the rest of us are just sitting around, playing with our cash boxes, and Michael's doing the work. No, that that's not right. They they work also. <laughs> that's, that's that's not right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, hey, Michael. We have your permission to use the, this your recording for the Meet the Farmer TV. You ain't have my permission the last time. <laughs> John and Christine both uh, 
more than anyone, fought the small fights. They educated uh, on a one-to-one -one level. Uh, they weren't um, interested in, you know, you know, fame or, you know, they touched people's lives just on an individual basis. I, I would also like to say as a goat owner uh, and, and as a livestock person and as a farmer, he loved his animals and, and she did too, more than anything. And they really understood that the process of a great product really begins with good farming and loving your animals. And I, went to his memorial service on Tuesday and I was ha I, something I didn't know about him was that he was very active in the Virginia Dairy Goat Association, always an advocate for the animals, always looking out for uh, rules and regulations that could be burdensome to us as producers uh, and as farmers. Sorry to, uh, to not have him here at the market this year. Uh, I've known him for over 15 years uh, and one thing that I would uh, like to say uh, to your viewers that he was always our advocate as farmers and cheese producers. Uh, he took another path. Uh, he took, a, in a lot of ways, I think, um, a much braver path. And as a local food person here in the Charlottesville area for a long time, I don't think that our scene would be as vibrant as it is if it were not for him. And um, we're just really, really going to miss him and his activism and his advocacy. So, what I would hope for Christine going on without John is that she continues to be our legislative advocate. Um, she knows more about that than anyone in the state, probably anyone in the country, and she is so knowledgeable about the, the speak, you know, the bureaucratic speak, uh, that we really need her as our guide to help us get through the next, uh, you know, phase of regulation that certainly is coming at us, but you know, that we welcome, you know, we welcome the fight gladly and she'll be on the front line for that, I'm sure, and we're it's much appreciated. It was very powerful, um, the number of people that were there from all kinds of different backgrounds. So there were, uh, Joel Salton said there were the foodies and then there were the real dirt under their fingernails farmers and a lot of people from Vicfa were there and it was a really, um, it was sort of, Sol solemn and somber, but it was also a real, a real celebration um, just of what John had done. John helped found VICFA, the Virginia Independent Consumers and Farmers Association, along with Catherine Russell, who we also lost earlier this year. It's been a real year of loss for VICFA. People in Virginia have been drinking raw milk almost continually up until the last, I don't know, I, I think it was around the turn of the 20th century that um, some of the problems started, but really there were no laws against this until 1960s. And so um, John and Catherine and some other people knew that in order for Virginians to be able to drink milk straight from the cow, we had to have some legal protections. And so they started this organization, not just for milk, but I think that was their personal motive because they, uh, you know John was a goat farmer and Catherine was a cattle farmer. And so they were really um, visionaries because they saw what we, could, what we could accomplish when we came together. And then John is you know, famous as the guy who gives away goat cheese at the market. He, um, after Vicfa had been running for a while, he was selling his cheese and then there were, he was actually um, cited for it and they were gonna shut him down. And he said, fine, I'll give it away. And the joke is that he was making more in donations than he ever made selling it. <laughs> and we all thought this was very funny. But John became a real um, an advocate for VICFA and for what we stood for. He would carry around t-shirts and literature all over the place, wherever he went. And I was the treasurer of VICFA until just this past week. And um, John would frequently walk up to me at meetings with a little piece of paper folded up and on the paper would be t-shirts, $12, um, bumper sticker, $4, literature, and he would list what people had bought from him, then he'd hand me a wad of cash or some checks. And it was really funny because I realized he was sort of an evangelist. <laughs> he just walked around with his stuff in his pocket or in his car. I don't think he was ever caught without a, um, you know, hand over the apple butter t-shirt <laughs> or something. And I, I love that about John, just how prepared he was always to tell people what we were about and um, 
to help people understand the issues. He and Christine Solem, his partner, were the most knowledgeable people. I mean, Christine has a formidable intellect and they're, they do their homework. And so whenever we had a legal issue or a question or a problem, we would always go to John and Christine and Christine would do the research and then you know, tell John and John would get it down. And then John would explain it to the rest of us. And so he could help us understand you know, what the issues were and he could help ordinary people who walked up to buy cheese and said, hey, what's the big deal with cheese? Really, without being too complicated, he was a very simple, he communicated in a simple way. He could explain to people what the issues were um, and why it was a problem and why they needed to do something about it. And he did this with such grace. He was just a very, a very gentle, um, strong, gentle, quiet man. And people listened to him, you know, when he talked. Congressman Periello, Tom Periello, when he was a candidate and stood no chance against um, his, his uh, multiple incumbent predecessor, Virgil Goode, uh, called me and asked if he could meet some farmers. And I said, why are you calling me? And he said, well, none of the farmers will call me back. <laughs> they all you know, have disdain for politicians. And most of them do. They're very libertarian, kind of by temperament. And so um, I said, well, I can get some farmers together if you promise you'll listen, if you um, promise you'll respect what they have to say and you won't just sort of sell them your spiel. And he said, I, I can do that. So he came over. And the thing about John is um, he, ha he kept his life very simple. And what he did was he farmed and he did VICFA or, you know, food activism. And that was it. And so when you called John and said, John, can you come to something? He always could. Because unlike me and most of the people I know, he wasn't juggling 75 million things. You weren't wondering if he'd actually show up. You weren't wondering if he'd be late. John always showed up. He was always on time and he was always prepared. So I said to John, would you come, you know, meet Tom? And he said, of course. And he showed up a little early and he bought, he brought all this cheese <laughs> and um, we had a dinner and he, we sat in a group and listened to Tom and talked to Tom and he was remarkable. He listened to us for well over two hours. And then at the end we started eating and that was when John approached him one-on-one. -on -one. He was really quiet during the group meeting, but he came up to Tom one-on-one -on -one and explained what our concerns were. And I could tell, he, you know, when John talked to you one-on-one, -on -one, he arrested your attention. He had this this quality of attention that you just couldn't turn away from. And Tom was very struck by this. And he would ask me later on, you know, how's the goat cheese guy? <laughs> and he really, he remembered um, just John's persistent, strong, um, and very rational, not, not kind of screaming and yelling, but very rational argument for our right to, um, to buy the food that we want from the people we want to buy it from. John and Christine were real pioneers for us. Um, in Central Virginia because they had the courage to kind of take on the powers. Um, they were some of the earliest people to believe that you could actually effectively resist um, the, you know, big ag messing with your food. I don't really think this is so much about government as it is about big business. Um, the government, you know, if it's not broken, they don't usually want to fix it, but big business sees a real threat to their market because the food they're producing is making us sicker and fatter and it's causing more and more problems year after year. And so people like John and Christine are providing real alternatives. And what they showed us in Central Virginia is how just a couple of people um, with the kind of reason on their side and can have a principled resistance to bad laws and they can outsmart the law. And this is what um, I still find very amusing is that you know John and Christine, these kind of two simple dirt under their nails farmers took on um, the city. And you know John refused to pay a misdemeanor fine and they had to decide whether or not to throw him in jail, which would have been ridiculous to throw a guy in jail for what he, you know, for, for not having the right kind of scales at the market. And um, I think for the rest of us, we, John and Christine make me feel like I have no sort of excuse for saying, oh, it's too big, I can't, you know, I can't take that on. This is bigger than we are, and we just have to kind of grin and bear it. Because they didn't grin and bear anything, you know. They were really, and they still, Christine is still just 
really one of the most formidable minds in the, um, in the kind of free food movement. She is, she is on top of her facts. And she, if she doesn't, she goes to the law bar, library and she figures it out. And John is, um, or John was, somebody who demonstrated to us how through quiet, principled, just consistent resistance, you can accomplish amazing things on this front. And so I, you know, I was inspired by him. He was also just a very um, attentive person. He, if you look at his, his garden and his home and, and his products, he had this, he saw things we didn't see. So he, like he, he would sell garlic, but he would sell five or six different varieties of Egyptian garlic nobody'd ever heard of. And you know, he would see a plant that I would call a weed and he would understand that it had a use. He had a way of noticing details and, and that he was an artisan. He, he paid attention to um, the details. His cheese was perfect every time. You never got like a bad batch from John because he was so meticulous in his, in his artisanry. And that also carried over into his life in general where he was a very deliberate, intentional man. I never saw John in a hurry, which, you know, my, my life is always in a hurry. And what I, what I started to learn from John, and I'm sad that he's no longer here to continue to teach us, especially in Vikta, is how when you simplify and pare it down, there's an extraordinary amount that matters that you can accomplish, and you can become a real expert at whatever it is you're doing. And so he didn't have his hand in many pots, but the things that he did were excellent. They were, they were just, um, they were beautiful. He created things of beauty. He created delicious things. And he did so, you know, slowly and without um, the kind of frenetic buzzing energy that characterizes, you know, a lot of the world. And I loved that about him personally. I loved his, his ability to, to keep his attention on one thing. Um, I think he was that, you know, in, in, in kind of unconventional ways that made him a very spiritual person. And part of, part of I believe part of the food movement is, is a spiritual movement. That we're not a spiritual in a kind of religious sense, but that we really, people in the kind of local, back to the land, food movement, we're resisting a lot of the, the disconnect between um, our food and, our, and the rest of our lives. And, you know, John was somebody who, who had his hands on things. And um, I would kind of watch just the way he, he treated objects and food. And, and it was just, there was a reverence about him that, that I thought was really beautiful and I'll miss very much. John had an impact on a lot of people. He was, you know, that crazy goat cheese guy, but people who stopped to talk to him understood how exceptional he was. And I guess I would say, I think I can say this confidently that, you know, what John would like us to do to remember and honor him is to keep up the fight, just to um, not relax in our um, persistent efforts to make real good, wholesome food and the communities that grow it. Um, to, to make them safe and thriving in Virginia from, you know, the, the, the powers and the companies that would like to see us disappear. He was, he was going to, you know, in the last, the last months and weeks of his life when he knew he was sick and everything, he was still showing up. He was still doing the work. And Christine, God bless her, I mean, she hasn't missed a beat. She hasn't missed a meeting. She hasn't missed a deadline. She's still cranking out this material. She came to the VICFA meeting last week, just days after John passed with a, a revised set of bylaws for us. So I guess I would say consider, you know, joining this effort. Consider joining um, Virginia Independent Consumers and Farmers, seeing what we're about, um, realizing you don't have to be a farmer to um, fight for farmers because, you know, they're growing the food you like to eat. So I'm not a farmer. <laughs> Right now, today, this instant, there is a Senate bill, Bill 510. Uh, Dick Durbin has sponsored it. It's called the Food Safety Modernization Bill. And it is a catastrophe for small farms. It will run John Coles's farm and Christine's farm and many of the other farms that we know, vegetable farms included, not just meat and milk, will run them right out of business because what it does is it lump, it lump legislates 
for farms of all shapes and sizes. Um, and the burden is way beyond what small farmers can bear. So right now we are calling um, Tom Periello, Mark Warner, and um, Jim Webb, and then people in their own districts are calling their own um, representatives to say, especially in the Senate though, because that's where the bill is, the House version of the bill has an exception for small farms. So if more than 50% of what you produce uh, is direct to consumer or direct to restaurant, you're exempt from these burdensome regulations. And we want that same exemption in the Senate form of the bill. And we're not gonna get it if more people don't make phone calls. Um, ironically, Michelle Obama is simultaneously out in California celebrating um, small artisan farms that immigrants are running in San Diego, saying this is a model for world farming. And this bill, the Durban bill, would make what they're doing illegal. So there's a real irony here. And we, we VICFA, wants to educate the public on this stuff and make sure you all get on the phone, get on the email, and tell your senators that whatever Food Safety Act is out there, you want to protect small farmers from burdensome regulations that will put them out of business. Um, we have a website, um, www.vicfa.org. Um, we had a meeting with Mark Warner's aide on food to talk about this Senate bill that's coming up. And she let us know that we were, they were hearing us because second to the Farm Bureau, we are the next biggest voice in food in Virginia. And we're, we're one of the bigger voices in the nation because we show up in D.C. and make a lot of racket and serve a lot of nice food. And John, um, year after year after year, has been at the very forefront of direct action. Um, you know, he's been to Richmond, he's been to D.C. more times than any of us can count. And I just, I personally want to thank John for just being such an inspiring model for us. But I think anyone in the state of Virginia who buys either produce or cheese or milk or any product directly from a farmer should thank John Coles because without him and a couple of other people in this state, we would no longer be able to do that legally. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that without John and the other people in VICFA, we would have lost the right to buy direct from farmers by now in the state. And that would be a, a huge loss to us and our people. So for more than 30 years, John Coles has been a keystone vendor here at the market. And with his partner, Christine Solem, have fought for small farmers to be able to sell their product directly to the consumer without regulation. Thank you for joining us for another Meet the Farmer TV. We need a two-tier system of regulation. And the way it is now, we, we as a small farmer can't really exist under the existing regulation. I think it's the simplicity of the whole thing. And what I tell my customers is, when they're concerned about the cheese, uh, you know, where does it come from? I tell them, I milk the goats. I make the cheese only from the milk of our goats. And then I bring it to the market and make it available. I'd like to be able to sell it. So. At least I'm making it available to people. And, and uh, uh, so I'm totally accountable. And this is, I think, very important because uh, the customer is our own inspector. We don't need the government to be involved in, in, in something like this. Now, if we're selling to a health food store or a supermarket, that's different. Yeah. But when you're selling to the final consumer, direct marketing. And you're watching Meet the Farmer TV. Yeah. I wish I could uh, <laughs> stay for it, but I have to go home and milk the goats. So uh, I'll see you all later. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia. And In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food.